Hi, I'm Javis Lewis and in this episode I'm going to show you how to extrude the object we created in the previous video in Blender. So previously we have turned a rasterized image into an SVG with curve information in Photoshop and we're going to take that result now into Blender and extrude it, set the light and get our scene going so that we can create the logo with the replicator and the grass and all that in the next video. So this one's kind of getting the scene ready and then in the next one we're going to be playing with the replicator or more accurately with the particle emitter. So let's see how we can do that. I've got Blender open here version 2.79 and I've got my default cube showing here with the default light and the default camera. And we're going to leave all that alone except for the cube. Let's get rid of that. In fact just so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to use my screencast keys here. So whenever I click a button, and of course we don't want to see the box and we don't want to do that. And we're going to want to, uh, don't want to do that either. So whenever I press a button here, you can see what I'm doing here. So let's bring our object in. I have it saved as a slightly modified version in my Dropbox folder under Blender projects and I think I just called it logo that Dash Studio SVG. I'm going to go and import that and here it is far away in the distance. So let's zoom in there. I've just basically did exactly what we did in the previous episode but in addition I have also uh, made sure that we turned this uh, into two separate objects. So Dash at the top slightly bigger and Studio slightly smaller on the bottom. So the first thing I want to do here is perhaps turn this around and make it slightly larger so that it fills these two, the, these four units in Blender. Let's see if we can do that. Let's select the object and then I'm going to rotate this around the Z axis by 90 degrees. So I'm going to press R and Z followed by 90. And that kind of takes care of that. That's very good. Now I also want to scale this up, but I don't want to scale it from the top left. I want to scale this perhaps from the middle of the logo. So first of all, I'm going to go hit my G key to grab the object and to make it shift just on a plane, I'm going to hold down shift Z. Or I'm just going to press shift Z. And now it's not going to move up and down. It's only ever going to stay in the X and Y plane. So that blender does that very nicely there. I'm just going to position that like so perhaps this looks like it could be good. You can always check from the side it's definitely not moved in the Z direction, which is nice. So now the pivot point of that logo is still at the top left corner, but I'd like it to be where the 3D cursor is currently. And I can do that by heading over here to the left and saying set origin. I'm just going to go and put that origin to the 3D cursor. And then boom, that manipulator gadget is in the middle of my logo. This is cool because now I can just go and hit S for scale and whoops, zoom out with the mouse a little bit and make it, yeah, make the logo perhaps that size. That's nice. This is not extruded. You can tell by the fact that it's still got that little curve icon here. It's called curve, but that's just an arbitrary name really that Blender gives it. You have this little icon at the front here and that shows that this is currently not a 3D object. It's just a curve object or a path object, if you will. But that's cool. We're going to change that right now. In fact, by heading over with this thing selected, by heading over to object, convert to mesh from curve meta surf text. So if we do that, just like I showed you in the previous installment, this is now a 3D object. As you can see from this little icon, it's changed. The name hasn't changed. Perhaps we should do that and call it Das Studio. And uh, now I can go ahead and extrude that. I can do that by heading into edit mode with the tab key and then selecting everything, just pressing the A key. And then I'm going to hit the E key to extrude. And then I'm just going to drag my mouse up and that will extrude that. So I think maybe something like this will work just fine. I can just about see it because I have selected some of these points here. But if I uh, hit tab again, then this is just going to be black and that's not very easy for me to see. So let me just define a color there. It's also it's very easy to do by just heading over to the material tab here. And currently the diffuse color is just black. That's why we're seeing this this horrible just you know darkness, nothing. And I'm just going to make that a little bit lighter. There we go. That should do for now. Okay, so uh, that's our logo. That's going to come out of the ground and the ground is what we're going to create next. And on the ground, we're going to be growing grass in the next video. For now, let's just create that ground by 
creating a new mesh object, perhaps a grid. A plane will also work fine, but we're going to use a grid and we're going to scale that up to, I don't really know how big this needs to be yet. We're going to just go and uh, make it about this size there. And I think I want the Dash Studio logo somewhere in that corner, but I guess I'm going to worry about the final positioning uh, a little bit later. For now, let's just see if we can get the camera going. Camera is always a little bit tricky in Blender. We can go and press the zero button on the numpad to have a look at our current camera right now, and we can see what would be rendered. Now, to if I move my camera now with the middle mouse button, then I can see that I'm moving away from the camera. So I can see my camera here, but I'm moving away from it so if I wanted to look through the camera I need to do that again so press zero on the numpad then I'm looking through the camera but if I wanted to lock it to what I'm currently looking at we just head over here to the to this pane here that opens with the N key by the way and uh, there's one option under view there's this thing called lock camera to view and if I select that then I can see this little red dotted line around that camera and if I select that now I can zoom in and out and now the camera is actually acknowledging what I'm doing here so now I can move my scene around and this is what's going to end up on the camera later. The dimensions of course are set with the render dimension so that's on this little camera icon here and uh, there's the resolution here. I want a square logo uh, or maybe I don't want a square logo I want a YouTube thumbnail and a square logo don't I? So technically I want two cameras. Hmm. Let's start with the square logo first and just make that uh, 3000 by 3000. It doesn't have to be that big really. I mean 2000 by 2000 would suffice, but we'll just we'll just leave it there and uh, that's now a square preview. So the reason why I'm actually doing this is that I can I can see how the light is going to hit my logo and how this is going to affect my scene. So I'm going to have something like that. I guess the whole thing is going to be covered in grass here. So the plane needs to cover the whole frame. And then, of course, my logo needs to be coming down a little bit. So uh, let me just unlock the camera from the view and collapse this. And uh, now I'm going to just move the logo into something of this position here. So again, select the logo, press G to select it. But now you can see it's kind of moving in all directions. I don't want that. I'm going to hit Shift Z. So that'll lock it onto here. That's kind of cool ish. Yeah, there. And then all we need to do is perhaps uh, to move the camera so that that logo is coming at me from the top a little bit more. Yeah, I think I like a top view better. Something like that. Something like that. So again, let's pick up that logo and put it here and perhaps even scale it up a bit. Something like that. Yeah. And then we can have the number on the bottom here. Uh, camera framing, we'll work, we'll work on that. I guess we'll work on that. So let's see how we can deal with the light. Let me undo the camera thing and let's have a look at the light. The light's currently over here. My camera is here, but I like the light to come in from this direction. So I like the light to be on the left hand side and cast kind of a long shadow from a lowish perspective over the logo so that I can that I can see some shadow here, some dramatic light effects. Let's see how we could do that. First of all, let's move the light. So we've, uh, we've just selected it and just like I did before with the G key and Shift Z, I'll be able to move it to somewhere here to the side of the logo. And now I think I also want to move it down. So I'm going to go G Z. That'll move it into one line only, into one axis only. It's very clever the way Blender has implemented that. And you can always type in a number if you have an accurate value. So if you want to rotate something around an axis, you would type R to rotate, then the axis you want to rotate it around, and then the exact number through which you want to rotate it, like um, R, Z, 90, and then you rotate something 90 degrees. Very, very clever. So the only other thing is that I want to rotate this kind of down on the logo a little bit. But for that, let's just turn this light into what we actually want to use it for. And in this case, uh, let's go and select the light icon. We don't need that palette anymore. So I'm going to close that down. So that light or the lamp now, I want to use an area light. So I'm going to just 
select area from this menu and I'm going to give it a size. So this is very similar to what we do, what we can do in uh, Dash Studio with the NVIDIA iRay engine. We just tell the rendering engine how large the object wants to be and that it is an emitter. So in this case, perhaps I'm going to make it a 10 by 10. Uh, just so that I get a bit of a representation of what that looks like. And so I can, this orange square now is my light. Perhaps that's even a bit too big. We'll, we'll find out. Think of it as a soft box. All I want to do now is rotate it so that it doesn't shine away from the logo. I want it to shine on the logo. So what I said earlier, RZ90 will do that. That's kind of, you know, RZ180 is probably what we want to do. And that kind of shines it onto the logo there a little bit, but uh, I guess I also want to rotate it around the X axis to do this, you know? You can also use the manipulator gadget and just move it away, something like that. To see what this is gonna look like in its final iteration, I need to have a look at the rendered preview of that. And I can do that down here. This is currently the solid view, and we're gonna look at the rendered view for just a moment here. And we can zoom in, and I can see that this is you know, kind of getting there, but it's too dark. So I, I, I'm not sure if I like the effect. I, I just can't see it. It's too dark. So with the lamp still selected, let's switch this thing on called use nodes. And now we have an emission node here, which is the square that we've just seen. We have a color. That's the color of the light. And we have a strength. So 100 is obviously not big enough. Let's try a thousand and see what happens. Kind of getting there, kind of getting there. Uh, perhaps we're going to do it something like 1500. It's kind of trial and error. So one thing you can see now is that the shadows here are relatively soft and this is kind of the softness that I like. If you wanted to change that, if you wanted to make them slightly harsher, slightly softer, that is governed by the size of the emitter itself. So a larger square emitting light will cast softer shadows whereas a smaller thing will cast harder harsher shadows so let's uh, let's see if that theory is correct if i switch this to five and five then we can see that the intensity is technically still correct but the shadows are a little bit harsher so uh, that's kind of cool that we can change it that way without influencing the type of shadow that we have. So I don't know how harsh my shadows want to be yet. Perhaps this is exactly what I want. Let's have a look what the, if I look through my camera here, this is what that would look like. It could work. I mean, right now we don't really know what this is gonna look like with the grass on. Um, but you know, this is a good starting point for the logo I'm thinking. Great, that's kind of the end of my setup video here. So perhaps one other thing, one other thing that we can look at here is you can see that the that uh, either rendered or not rendered, you can see that these letters have these little steps here. So I can see the geometry that's being created here. If I don't want to see that, all I have to do is select my Dash Studio logo. And on the left hand side, there's the shading option here. I can either set that to smooth or to flat. This is currently flat. That's kind of the default setting. But if you set that to smooth, then those things will go away. And then also you can also see some other uh, interesting artifacts here. So it really depends on the geometry of the object. You can also put a subdivision surface modifier on that. In our case, it really isn't that big a deal because we're going to cover this with stuff anyway so we're not ever going to see those things later but that's it for this episode i hope you enjoyed it if you liked it of course please share it with friends family and total strangers and join me in the next video where we're going to cover all this with grass and other stuff using the particle emitter see you then mm -hmm.